Hi there, my name is Gary Friedman, and welcome to the Friedman Archives blog. Today we're going to be talking about the Sony Alpha 7 R II. 42 megapixels, that alone isn't enough to make you switch. The fact that it has phase detect autofocus built in gives you the best of both worlds. I want to talk to you a little bit about that and clear up some of the confusion a lot of people are having regarding phase detect versus contrast detect, all the different focus modes. But first, I want to show you a feature that you're not going to believe. Let's say that you're a videographer and you wished you had one of those really fancy power zoom lenses so you can get a really smooth zoom, but you don't. You have lenses like this. Believe it or not, there's a way you can emulate the power zoom without any degradation in quality. How is that possible? Let me show this to you using the A7R2. Now, I'm gonna have you use a feature which I had previously derided in my books. The feature was called Zoom. And in order to make it work properly, you have to have it assigned to a button. So here I have custom key settings. Right button, Zoom. That's where it's previously assigned. Now normally, if you're shooting stills, you invoke the zoom function. What it does is it invokes a digital crop, something I've never cared for. With a digital crop, you're actually taking some scissors and cutting away all those valuable pixels that you paid so dearly for. And then it takes that and up reses it again back to 42 megapixels. Great if you're a tourist, not if you're a purist. But that's for taking stills. What if you're shooting movies? If you're shooting movies, there's no degradation of quality whatsoever. Why? Because whenever you're shooting a film, it's, the camera's already discarding a lot of pixels, just even, even shooting 4K. So it's throwing pixels away anyway between other pixels. It just does it in such a way that it throws away a different set of pixels. Let me show you how it works. There we go. Now, in order to invoke the artificial zoom, what I do is I press the right button once, and then I press and hold the right button again. And this time, it zooms in. Now what's actually happening is a digital zoom is doing its thing. It's throwing away pixels. And I can zoom out the same way. So all the benefits of a power zoom without any of the expense for the power zoom lenses. This video just paid for itself, didn't it? Let me talk about phase detect versus contrast detect because it can be kind of confusing. Contrast detect is actually the easiest thing for anybody to implement, and it's an easy way to work. In fact, I got a nice flow chart for it right here. Let's see here. Great thing about contrast detection is it doesn't require any fancy hardware. All you have to do is just guess and do a binary search. So the way the camera knows something's in focus is if it looks at some pixels here and some pixels there, and if there's a sharp, sharp contrast between the two, then it knows that there's uh, something in focus. If it's not a sharp contrast, a camera concludes that it's fuzzy. So what do you do if you see something that's fuzzy and want to get it in focus? Well, you guess. Is it in focus now? No. Well, move the lens. Which way? I don't know. Just move it. How much? I don't know. Just move it a certain amount. So it guesses. It'll move it a certain amount and check. Is it better or worse? If it's worse, it'll go back and turn the other direction and then do another test and starts to do a compare it'll start bouncing back and forth several times until it narrows it down to proper focus. In computer science terms, it's called doing a binary search. Let me show you how this works. For my sample model today, I'm gonna to be using the uh, Sony Mavica, digital Mavica. Sony was a pioneer in digital photography. This isn't the original one, but it certainly was an early one. It stored everything on three and a half inch floppy drives. And the floppy drive is built inside. Enough of, enough of that. Let's put this over here. Now, in order to show you contrast detection the way it's supposed to be working, I'm going to use a camera that was designed from the ground up to do contrast detect autofocus. This is the Sony NEX7, a wonderful camera. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful industrial designs that Sony has ever done. And let's point it at our subject. Now, as you watch it focus, you can see it hunt a little bit, back and forth, back and forth, and it gives you a green light. Contrast detection is great. It's easy to implement, and for most purposes, it works really, really well. It falls short in two major areas, which is the areas where DSLRs have traditionally excelled in. One is object tracking, in case you're shooting an Olympic athlete who's coming toward you. The other one is if you have an extreme telephoto lens attached to it. 
then the little bit of hunting turns into a lot of hunting and it doesn't work very well. So for these reasons, face detect has always been preferred for the extreme photographer. Well, when Sony started to design the full frame E-mount cameras, starting with the A7, they started to build in face detection autofocus points right into the sensor. They never really made good use of it, however, until the A7R2 came around. So it's very important to keep in mind the kind of autofocus that's going to be driving your lens when you design the lens. There are some lenses which are designed to be driven by a contrast detect autofocus body, such as the NEX7 here. There are also lenses that are designed to be driven by phase detect, and you can't take a phase detect lens and put it on a contrast detect body and have it work well. How do I know this? I happen to have a lens that was designed for shooting phase detect. It's here. It's the, uh, the Sony Zeiss 24 to 70 f2.8. It's kind of heavy. And it's got an LAEA-1 adapter. So it was designed to be attached to an APS-C camera like this. Now remember, the NEX7 only knows contrast detect autofocus. That's it. The lens is designed to accept phase detect commands. What happens when you pair the two together? Let's see. Zoom in a bit. I'm going to press the shutter release button halfway. And you can see it's starting to hunt. And it'll zoom in a bit. Boop, boop, boop. There. Took what, about four seconds, five seconds to do that? Let's try that again. I'll throw it off a bit. It's not nearly as smooth and fast as instant as you expect autofocus to be. So that's why it was such a challenge when Sony decided to create the full frame A7 series bodies. Well, the E mount was originally designed for contrast detect autofocus. All the full frame FE lenses were designed to accept commands in either contrast detect language or phase detect language to, you know, for lack of a better technical term. So that's what happened here. So that's the basic difference between contrast detect and phase detect autofocus, and the A7R2 can do both. Now I'm going to show you something kind of interesting. I'm going to put this lens combination on the A7R2, because when you put an A mount on there, you can actually tell the camera to use phase detect only or contrast detect only. In this case, I'm going to have it go phase detect only. I'm going to show you something kind of interesting. And I'm going to put this camera on a tripod, so I'll be right back. Don't, don't go away. Okay. I've got the camera set up on a tripod, and I have as my test subject a single horizontal line. Now, as I said earlier, the reason I'm using this combination of A-mount lens and LAEA1 adapter is so that I can tell the camera, only use phase detect autofocus, don't try to fall back on contrast detect, which is what it usually does if it can't find things. Uh, and I'm going to switch focusing modes to flexible spot. And let's move that flexible spot so that horizontal line is right in the middle. There we go. Now I press the shutter release button halfway and notice how the camera is having a really hard time finding focus. I'm going to try that one again. Press the shutter release button halfway and can't find it. Now with a simple twist here, I'm going to turn that and it finds the, right, <laughs> finds the line right away. So I'm even going to try a different focus point now. Let's try up there and over there. Great. Horizontal line. There we go. Can't find it. Vertical line. No problem at all. So the takeaway point here is the baked in face detect autofocus points can only detect horizontal lines. Now you probably never would have noticed that because you never just took pictures of horizontal lines, but that's the way it works. And all of the autofocus points are that way. It's a handy thing to know. So the question comes up, with so many autofocus points to choose from, how does the camera decide what to do? To show you the answer, I'm going to introduce a second object here. This one is the uh, Sony Alpha 900. This is the only Sony ever made that has the most satisfying psychological kerchunk ever. Hey, just like the old Minolta SRT-101. So I'm going to put that a little closer here and here. 
So, you got your camera on wide area autofocus, it can decide for itself where your subject is and focus on it. How does it make a choice? Well, generally speaking, it will analyze the distance between every single one of those focus points and then it will choose whatever is closest. That's the rule. Now that rule can be overridden if it finds something that looks like a face. For example, let me substitute the rear subject here with a Sears Portrait Studio Special. I press the shutter release button halfway and if it detects a face, all of a sudden that gets to be the subject. So that's pretty much how your camera thinks. It'll focus on whatever's closest unless the face detection is turned on and it detects a face. So then not only will it focus on that face, but it'll also bias the exposure toward that face so it'll come out right. It's not a bad decision for it to make. I find face detection to be a very handy thing, especially when shooting the grandkids, a lot. Now there's a new feature. Well, it isn't really new, but it was refined for the A7R2 an improvement to face detection called IAF. How does that work? Well, for best effect, you have to assign it to a button. I've assigned it to the C3 button over here because that's where my fingers can naturally fall whenever I'm shooting. And the way it works is, first you assign it to a button and then you press that button and hold it in. And then if it finds an eye, it will find that eye and track it. Oh. I'm sorry, I need to be in AFC mode in order for that to really be tracking. So AFS, AFC, there we go. Let's try that one again. Hold down the C3 button. It'll find an eye and then we'll track the eye as it goes around. This is a much better implementation than on, on previous cameras. And it's a very, very nice thing when you're shooting portraits because after all, even toddlers know, even newborns know, whenever they're looking at someone, they always look at the eyes. And photographers just naturally say, okay, you're going to focus on the eyes because whenever you play it back, that's the first thing you're going to pixel peep on. We all do it. So that's basically how the autofocus mechanism works. It'll either focus on something that's closest or on a face that it recognizes. But Sony keeps trying to make things better. What can we do? What can we do? Tracking an object is always difficult, especially if those are the only heuristics you have for identifying what the object is to be tracked. So, here's the first solution that came up with that problem. Something called center lock on AF, and it works like this. Get on menu, camera seven, center lock on AF, on. With this feature, the user tells the camera, see that in the center? That's my subject, track that. And here's how it works. You fill your subject in the center, and then you press the center button, and it says, oh, okay, I recognize that. I can continue to analyze the video frame and track that subject no matter where it goes in the frame. As long as it moves slowly, it's gonna do a pretty decent job. And that's why I mentioned, don't try this for sports. It's better for turtles and maybe grandchildren when you're kind of running around, but that's about it. And it's great for movies. With stills, especially if you're shooting a lot, it's a lot of extra work. You can press the center button once again, it goes away. Let's try that one again. Press the center button once, the instructions come up. Tracks the nearest subject to screen, center your subject and then press the, the button. There it is. There's the double white rectangles. Even if I zoom out, it's gonna be able to track that left and right. It does a pretty good job. Great, how can we make it better? Well. The Sony engineers have probably said, I know. What if we did the same kind of thing, only this time we don't require the user to tell us what the subject is. We'll use our previous heuristics, something that's close or something that has a face. We'll assume that's the subject and then we'll start to track it as it, as it goes throughout the frame when you're in AFS mode. Let's see how that works. First of all, that feature and the center lock on AF are mutually exclusive. So the first thing you have to do is turn center lock on AF off there it is. And now, to get the new feature, the lock on AF mode, you go to function, focus area, and normally you go with wide because that's where the camera will make all of its decisions. 
And as you're scrolling to the very bottom, which is where we want to go, you have a lot of other options here. Uh, you have the zone, which takes up about three quarters of the screen in many different places. Uh, you have the center, which is kind of self-explanatory. You have the flexible spot where you can move it all over the screen. You have the expanded flexible spot, which oddly is the same size as the large flexible spot above it. And then the very last one here is lock on AF. And when you're here, you can also use the left and right buttons to choose a focusing area. And the focusing areas you have to choose from are exactly the same ones that we walked through above it. You've got wide, the zone, the center, flexible spot, and you can choose three different sizes, medium, large, expanded flexible spot, and then of course wide. So comparing apples and apples, we were just on wide earlier. Let's do the same thing again. This time, I don't have to tell the camera where my subject is. I just have to press the shutter release button halfway like I normally would, it finds the subject, and then you see the double green rectangles, and then it'll start to track it for me. I don't have to do any extra work. This is a better implementation than most previous Sony cameras, so they keep tweaking the algorithms and it does get better. And for that reason, I tend to keep lock on AF wide active all the time. Great when you're shooting grandkids, not so much for landscapes. Sometimes when things are really moving and lock on AF makes a rare wrong choice, I can very quickly override it by pressing the center button here. That has previously been assigned the standard. Let me show you what I did. Uh, you can assign any function to any button. Over here, custom key settings, the center button has been set to a mysterious feature called standard. What does that do? Well, when you're in AFC mode, which is trying to track anything that moves, and wide area, if it makes a mistake, what this does is it instantly, instantly, when as soon as you press the button, it switches to spot focusing or center area focusing, and then it locks the focus right there. You can see the green light in the lower left-hand corner. So that's how I can quickly override the, the automation in case I don't like what it's doing. So it's a great little tool here. You can work very quickly. and it'll, You don't have to think most of the time. And in the rare area that makes the mistake, you can override it pretty quickly. So that's a little bit of insight for the Sony A7R2. Now let me tell you a little bit about the book I have for this camera. Blah, 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 blah. Sony Alpha 7 R2, blah, 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 Friedman Archives website slash ebooks, blah, 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 best ebook you can get on this camera, blah, 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 it's a bargain, two week money, get money back guarantee, blah, 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 get it, you won't be sorry. That's it for this edition. Thanks very much for watching. Yeah.